Hello, welcome to this video about the master production schedule. This training will consist of four videos. First, we'll have a first introduction and some background information. We'll look at a basic use case and how to configure the master production schedule. In the third video, I'll combine the master production schedule with other replenishment methods like make to order and reordering rule. And at last, we'll have a look at a use case with seasonal products where we're going to replan um, the forecasted demand. Now, before we start with the MPS, there are some concepts in Odoo you need to be aware of um, to, to better understand the functionalities behind the mass production schedule. So let's have a quick recap. The first one is lead times. Lead time is the average time between the confirmation, so the start of a process and the completion. We have two kinds of lead times. We have lead times that can be defined on a product, so that are specifically for that product. For example, the supplier delivery lead time. That's the time between the confirmation of the purchase order and the receipt of the goods. The manufacturing lead time, as the word says, time needed to manufacture the product. Or, for example, the customer lead time. This is the time between the confirmation of the sales order and the delivery of the goods. So how much days you need uh, between those two after sales confirmation and then actually doing the delivery. So these are typically can be defined on each product. And then the second kind of lead times is the ones you define on your process. So these are usually security lead times. This is an additional time you add uh, on your process in order to mitigate the risk of a delay. For example, um, the late delivery of a vendor, some issues that might occur during the manufacturing process. For example, the security lead time. Um, let's say you, you uh, promise your customer that you will deliver next Friday and you uh, add a security lead time on your sales process of two days. This would mean that all your internal processes will be planned in such a way that you're ready to deliver the goods two days before, being in this case, the Wednesday. This helps you that if something unexpectedly occurs, this doesn't immediately mean that you're missing the deadline, the delivery of the customer on Friday. Now, the goal of this meeting is not to go into depth on details. If you would like to have more information um, on details, we have a really good article online on uh, the lead times where you also have um, the links between all the lead times. You have different use cases. So if you would like to have more information, I advise you to have a look at this presentation. Now, and in the mass production schedule, we'll use these lead times at the basis for calculations and our planning. The next concept is how do we plan in Odoo? In Odoo, we're going to split up the planning in two phases. We'll have a long-term planning next week or longer, and we'll have a short-term planning, which will focus on the next days. So the long-term planning, this is where the MPS comes in. It's where we start from the date at which the products are needed, and we're going to work backwards, and we're going to do calculations based on lead times, and we're going to set priorities. And with priorities, we mean what needs to be done, so manufactured or purchased, by which due date. So out of this planning is going to come a list of, for example, manufacturing orders with a preliminary scheduled date. Now, this date doesn't mean we're actually going to produce on this date, the date is only an indication of priority. Okay. So this is where the MPS, as I said, is going to focus on this long-term planning. Then in the second phase, we have the short-term planning. This is where the actual planning, where we're actually going to say this uh, work order, are we going to produce on this day and on this work center? And so we do, if needed, fine-tuning based on the actual situation. So this is a forward planning that typically your foreman, he comes in the morning, he looks at the situation or he looks at the situation for the next day 
and he starts, if needed, rescheduling. So he's really going to say this person is going to work on this work order in this work stand. So what's the advantage of doing a rescheduling on the short term? Of course, since you have, uh, it's more accurate, since you have a better view on the actual situation, on the technical breakdowns, on absent employee absenteeism, you will have to, the rescheduling will have less impact. And then the third concept is a procurement methods. So in Odoo we have, um, there are three big procurement methods. So we have the make to order principle, the reordering rules and the mass production schedule. What is important, if you would, again, if you would like to have more information on this, there is a dedicated presentation, high level, on the differences between those three uh, methods. For right now, what you need to keep in mind is one product is one replenishment method. So it's either MTO, reordering rules, or MPS. You cannot combine for one product these replenishment methods. So today we'll focus on mass production schedule. This procurement method is divisible in case you have long manufacturing or purchasing lead times. In case of a complex bill of material, with lots of, uh, for example, critical subcomponents. An example would be a car, which has an engine, which has a chassis, and then the engine it itself already has maybe 100, 200 um, subcomponents. Or another use case would be uh, seasonal products who have an irregular, unpredictable peak demand. Now, let's have a look at the mass production schedule. What is it? You can see a screenshot here, and the mass production schedule is a high-level overview of your storable product. And in, at a glance, you'll see for your storable product the upcoming demand, both the actual, so this means what your customer had ordered, the confirmed sales orders, but also the forecasted, what you estimate, uh, your estimated demand. You'll also see the direct, demand versus the indirect demand. So the indirect demand is for the components. What I mean by that is, uh, if I take again my example of my car, if I have a need uh, to build 100 cars, this will also trigger a need, an indirect demand for my engine. In a mass production schedule, we'll also see an overview of the upcoming stock levels, both actual and the forecasted stock levels. So based on um, the intermediate actions, we'll also see a forecasted stock level. And then the third um, row will be the replenishments. So the actual replenishments, the actual manufacturing orders and purchase orders that are already generated versus suggested replenishments um, where the MPS is going to help you um, and to make suggestions on what should be ordered when. So uh, in a nutshell, the MPS is going to help you to control your stock and replenishment. It's going to give you uh, suggestions on when and which quantity to manufacture or to buy. And he's all do, doing all that while taking account the lead times and other replenishment details defined on your product. So let's say um, your final product needs to be manufactured, then the MPS doesn't only take into account the manufacturing lead time, but is also going to calculate the correct amount of raw material uh, that you need to uh, procure, and also at what time you need to procure this in order to ensure that you have your raw material available when you need, start, when you need to start the manufacturing order for your final product. So the MPS is actually doing all these backwards calculations while taking into account all the lead times of the components. Now, of course, the MPS needs a lot of information to base itself on. So where is this information coming from? Well, they're usually in the companies, there is going to be a weekly, bi-weekly, monthly meeting between the different departments. The sales are going to talk about uh, which deals are in the pipeline, which leads are, are coming in, what's going to be closed. This is your forecasted sales. 
manufacturing can talk about the available capacity per plant. Maybe there is a big maintenance scheduled. Some, um, some work centers will be out um, for certain weeks. Purchasing departments can talk about procurement strategies. Maybe with the last incident we had in the Suez Canal, um, there are some big delays to be expected. Maybe we need to also take that into account. Logistics, they'll talk about stock levels, safety stocks. Um, maybe there was a big leakage in the warehouse and some components are not usable anymore. All these kind of informations uh, are inputs for the mass production schedule. And based on this, um, as a group, uh, they can take certain uh, decisions like, are we going to increase the production maybe for a certain period? How are we going to handle uh, all the information we have here? So the owner of the mass production schedule is the scheduling department or the planning department. So I'd say manage this high level product uh, long term overview. Uh, based on here, all the input they get from everywhere, uh, from the suppliers, these kind of things, from the um, scheduling meeting, they input all this in the MPS, and the MPS is going to generate uh, manufacturing orders and RFQs with um, delivery deadlines, based on uh, the lead times as we discussed before. Now, so let's first see at the manufacturing department so as we said this is the long-term planning the long-term planning generates a list of manufacturing orders with a certain priority what is the production manager going to do he's going to take this list of priorities and he's going to transform it in a detailed production planning and he's going to ensure that the requested deadlines are met so this is what happens at the production site we have the same kind of mechanism on the purchasing department, again, they also get a list of um, items to be purchased with a certain priority and a deadline by which um, the orders should be placed in order to have all the components on time to um, produce the scheduled, um, to, yeah, to produce the scheduled goods. Now, let's have a look at some of the fields we'll discover during um, or we'll see it during the use case. So the first one is the um, actual demand. So this one is based on the confirmed sales orders. Next to that, we have the forecast demand. This is the one defined by the client and it's a manual field. And based on the inputs from the scheduling meeting, you um, can adapt this field. Now, why do we have um, the actual field, uh, the actual demand, and also a field for the forecast demand. The actual demand is only for information. So it isn't actually going to trigger anything in the mass production schedule. The master production schedule will take into account the forecast demand. And we have a split of cells in order to give you the freedom to decide yourself how much you would like to replenish. Because maybe you already know that um, there's a big order coming in that you would already uh, would like to take into account just signatures missing so that's why it's not in the actual demand but you know it's coming so in that case uh, you have the forecast demand which is a manual field and that's your, actually your planning field you decide how much um, what you think your forecast demand is then the next one is a suggested replenishment this is uh, the calculation Odoo does and we're going to tell you um, uh, for which products, uh, how many uh, manufacturing orders you need to generate, or if you need to um, generate an RFQ. This is based on the forecast demand and the forecast stock. And of course, for components, is also based on the combination or the total of the direct and the indirect forecast demand. And then next to that, we have the actual replenishments. These are the manufacturing orders on the RFQs or the purchase orders that are actually already created in the system. The next cells we'll have a look at are the available to promise and the forecasted stock. So the available to promise, which you can see here, is the quantity available for sales. 
at the end of the period. So here we are in the daily schedule. So at the end of May 15, we have 500 units available to sell at the end of the day. Next to that, we have the forecasted stock. So the forecasted stock will um, take into account your um, forecasted, uh, your starting inventory at the beginning of the period. So in this case of the day, uh, minus the forecasted demand, plus the suggested replenishment. And this is your forecasted stock at the end of the day and your beginning or starting inventory for the next day. Now, there is something that is a little bit tricky in Odoo, which means that, uh, or tricky, you just need to be aware of it. Here we are in um, a daily, in this example, we are in a daily schedule, which means that this, so your first cell or your first column is always the actual situation at the beginning of the period, which means that, okay, in this case, May 6th, it's at the beginning of the day, this is your actual stock. If you're on a weekly or on a monthly basis, this is going to be the situation on the first day of the week, so on Monday or on the first of your month. So that's something you need to be aware of um, when you look at the mass production schedule. And then we have the product replenishment parameters. These are extra parameters uh, or extra constraints. Um, you can input for the mass production schedule to keep um, to, take, to take into account during these calculations. So the first one we have is the minimum to replenish. This is the minimum quantity to manufacture or to buy. Imagine you buy your components from China. Uh, they have to come by container. There's a very high transportation cost related to that. Of course, when you need a product, you're not going to order them one by one. You're going to order them in batch in order to spread the high transportation cost. So that's the minimum to replenish. On the other side, we also have the maximum to replenish. This is the maximum quantity you can have in stock or that you can manufacture within one MPS interval. So the MPS interval, that is if you're in a daily, a weekly, or a monthly scheduling, planning, or planning. And then the last one is a safety stock target. For the safety stock, that's the quantity you would like to have in stock at all times. This is where we're going to uh, catch the unexpected demands. And it's also defined within the one MPS interval. So. The, the, the stock you would like to have it within one day, during the week, or for one month. And why do we have the safety stock? It's to, to avoid not being able to deliver or to have a stock breach. The suggested replenishment cell I talked about before, and so we're just going to tell you how much um, products you should produce or buy. It can have different colors to help you uh, take decisions or to draw your attention um, to certain cells in the mass production schedule that you need to have a look like. So if the cell is gray, this means that um, the demand is already taken care of. There's no extra, extra action needed. Green means, well, this is some replenishments you need to do. So you need to take action and hit replenish. Red and orange, these are warnings. This means that they want to draw your attention to this cell and it's something you need to have a look at. So normally you would go back to the mass production schedule on a regular basis. And uh, those red and those uh, orange cells, they will draw your attention in case that some of the circumstances change. For example, maybe uh, you did a replenishment uh, for some manufacturing orders uh, but they got cancelled, which means that situation changed. And with the current, the new situation with those cancelled manufacturing orders, you cannot keep up, um, you cannot um, fulfill your progressed demand. Or the other way around, um, maybe you reduced or somebody else reduced the forecast demand or there were some changes and you need to take actions. Now, this is the end of this video. 
Now, let's have a look at the first use case in the next video.